check that out. It literally sheared right off one day. Hey everybody, John Grimsmo here. In this video, I wanna to talk to you guys about filtering your coolant on a CNC milling machine. Super critical thing. A lot of times these machines don't come with coolant filters, but if you think about it, all of the little chips and stuff, especially we do a lot of very fine machining, um, they float in the coolant and they get sucked up into the pump and then they get spit directly at the cutting tool and your parts and it's, it's not good. It, it'll chip the tool, it'll give you a bad finish, reduce your tool life, break some tools. Um, and that's not very cool. So a couple years ago, we installed these filters. We got them from McMaster, but they also have them at Home Depot um, and various other places, typically used for filtering household water, like uh, your water system at home. They work very well. We would put in a, uh, this is a 20 micron paper filter, bloop, and then the pump pressurizes the fluid, goes through the filter, comes out clean, love it. Um, the problem with these, as we found out very catastrophically, check that out, it literally sheared right off one day. I had just gone home for the night. We normally leave this machine, like we hit cycle start as we go home. It runs for seven hours at night unattended. Um, I had just left, but Eric and Sky were still here. And all of a sudden there was coolant everywhere. Uh, Sky said he saw it happen and it just fell or cracked or something coolant started spraying everywhere um, it was it was not a fun cleanup so the plastic in this gets brittle either over time or with the oil uh, contamination or the vibration of the machine all of those are contributing factors to this failing I posted this up on Instagram and some people suggested just keep buying new canisters because that's cheaper than doing a full retrofit of a system and that's true but we're full Grimsmo here so this cost me all in all, I think just over $900 to do the proper setup. That was probably like $200. Um, but I wanted to go, go big and do it right. So in here, we just got two hydraulic hoses with uh, JIC fittings. Love those JIC fittings. And then I haven't even opened this yet. It's been here for a week. So let's open it real quick. Norseman, activate. Aha. So these will now be bag filters. I think I got five micron, maybe 10 micron. So the coolant goes in, pressurizes the bag, you know, clean liquid comes out, all the junk stays in the bag. So this will be the stand for it. Filters, filters, I got all of my fittings required. It took me like hours on McMaster, looking at the fittings, wrapping my head around it. You know, if it goes here and goes here and you gotta adapt that to that. And some of the fittings on the lathe are weird. Um, and then I have this, oh yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do two pressure gauges because I want a pre-filter and a post-filter pressure gauge so I can see pressure drop across a clogged filter. You know, let's say it runs 50 PSI, it should be 50 and 50, and then when it's clogged, it'll be like 50 and 30 or whatever. Um, so it's really nice to see that pressure drop so you know when the filter's clogged. And that's got staples, so I'm not gonna cut it. Oh, yeah. So this guy's rated, I think at 500 PSI rating. Gorgeous. We have the same thing on the Nakamura. I'll show you in a second. Um, yeah, sweet. It's already got ports for pressure gauges before and after. I think this is your split line where the, the bag filter goes down. It's got a drain, it's got an outlet, it's got an inlet. It's got an O-ring on the top. And it's a really nice unit. I think that this thing is like 300-ish, maybe it was 500, I can't remember. Um, in the description, Aaron will put part numbers of everything. This is cool. Here we are in the back of the Nakamura. We have our giant, monster, beautiful 300 PSI pump that pumps the coolant. So if you look this way, you can see the outlet is right here, and then it goes to some JIC 90s, goes to this hose, uh, it's been good, and then inlet, and then outlets on the bottom. We do have our two pressure gauges. Because they're threaded directly in, I can't clock them the same way. So one's clocked backwards because you're, you're at the liberty of the NPT threads. You don't want to over crank it too much. Um, so in the new system, I'm going to have the stainless hoses that'll come up and then the pressure gauges will mount like up to the side of the mill 
I'll make a little like magnet mount or something, double-sided tape them to the wall or something. But yeah, that's what it looks like in place. It's been epic. Clean coolant is very important because I didn't realize this at first, but all the little tiny micro machining stuff floats in the coolant the, or stays at the bottom and then your pump sucks it up and then it's spitting it right at your cutting tool. So like you're putting metal directly at your cutting tool, sometimes hardened steel like we're doing. No wonder why your tools chip. No wonder why you get bad surface finish. All this stuff is super important because um, it's just good. You don't want all that crap like hitting your tool and your part and making bad finishes. So yeah, clean coolant, very important. Next up, we're gonna install the filter on the mills. Ta-da! Uh, the old canisters were mounted to these blue things here and we had some plumbing and fittings and going in there. But we ended up getting now the same filter that we have on our Nakamura lathe. We get this from McMaster as well. Whereas the blue ones are about, I think like $50 per canister. This guy was 530 US. So it's, it's a lot of hooch. And then all the fittings and everything like that brought the total up to about 900 US. Uh, and there's a lot of mental planning, like wrapping around what fittings and how to get from this size to that size and how to route it and make it all fit. Uh, we added a pressure relief valve here, just in case it gets so backed up, you don't want to create a pressure canister that could, I don't know, explode or something. So this wasn't that expensive, a nice little safety valve. We've got it set just above the um, regular operating pressure. So that should feed back and go towards the spindle anyway. We added two lines here to give our pressure gauges. This is before and after the filter. So if the filter starts getting really clogged up, then before the filter will go more pressure and after the filter will go less pressure. And we mounted them quick and dirty right now, just in a position that we can always look at them and see what the variance is. And right now, I mean, they're showing like one or two PSI different, but that just could be the quality of the gauge not being perfect, um, so that's fine. This machine is a Japanese machine, so the one fitting going to the coolant tube is a JIS fitting, Japanese Industrial Standard or something like that kind of a weird thread. So finding that that adapter was kind of hard. Everything else is these swivel JIC fittings, stainless steel braided lines from McMaster. They're cheap. Um, braided line was the same cost as buying like rubber hoses. So, and these are good for super high pressure. The coolant just turned off doing a tool change and then boom, goes back up. Love it. We added, uh, the machine comes with a check valve here, but we, kind of moved it to a different location. So the check valve is directly after the filter. And yeah, relatively straightforward. The coolant comes out the pump, up to the inlet, through the filter, out the outlet, boom, done. Works great, uh, love it. Maybe in a second we'll pass this over to Sky and he can, um, when the mill is, a fruit, when the mill is available, not using coolant. We can pull the cap off, show you guys inside, show you, we've had it on for about less than a week now, show you what the first week of coolant chips looks like. Take it away, Sky. So uh, let's uh, take over from where John left off. This is the coolant filtering vessel. And I'll show you how the, basically first week of filtering is gone. We haven't changed the filter yet, so this will all be pretty much, it should be pretty bad because we had it unfiltered for a while. Oh yeah, I should have grabbed a paper towel. <laughs> so it's pretty packed with chips and stuff. I'm gonna pop this out of the metal base that it's in so you can see it better. That's better. Yeah, so you can see from the outside that it doesn't actually look too bad. It's pretty dark. The inside's pretty evenly coated with swarf, but it we could continue running it for quite a bit longer. We haven't seen any pressure drop on the gauges, so it's probably good to run for quite a while longer. But you can see that's working. It's annoying to get it to seat back into that metal base. There we go. It's also probably not the best to be sticking my hands all in the coolant, but it's fine. So this pressure relief valve we got on the top, uh, if the filter ever becomes fully full of stuff, 
and clogged, this pressure relief valve will kick over because the inlet pressure will be higher than it is expecting and it will bypass the filter and go still feed coolant into the spindle. And since we do so much lights out machining, we never want the spindle to have no coolant and this will keep it running. Unfiltered coolant is a lot better than no coolant. I think that's pretty much it. The coolant from the spindle drops down into the bottom of the inside of the machine, flows into that tank, which is kind of gross right now. We need to clean that out. And then there's filters here that take off all of the big chunks, big chips, piece of foam, etc. This is the pull tank. We've got a skimmer pulling up uh, mostly oil that's separated into that tank which needs to be emptied <laughs> and then this pump here is pulling coolant at around 50 psi into the inlet of the filter which is above the the mesh and then the outlet over here pulls it through the mesh and into this tube into the machine and this will go right to the spindle the pressure relief's above the filter and it leads to the outlet and we've got a one-way check valve here so that we can't really get back pressure on that. All right, thanks for coming along.